Welcome to The Spread, where we're missing the great outdoors just as much as you are. I'm Matt Rabel. The OCC announced this week that it was named the best equities clearinghouse by Markets Media for the third year in a row. Considering how well they've been managing the unprecedented volume of contracts traded over the past few weeks, I'd say at the very least they've earned a gold star or two. SIBO had their annual meeting this week and announced the preliminary shareholder voting results for their board of directors elections. Spoiler alert, almost everybody on their board of directors will be holding on to the reins for the time being. Two exceptions mentioned in the statement they put out on May 12th is that Carol Stone and Frank English Jr. did not stand for re-election. Stone had been on the board since SIBO's IPO in 2010, while English served from 2012 until this year. Small point of order here. A few weeks ago, I discussed the oil markets and the Bachelier options pricing model, the pronunciation of which I butchered by saying the Bachelier model in my natural Midwestern drawl. I would promise to speak all French terms that come up on the show perfectly from now on, but I think we both know that's not going to happen. Negative oil prices were the subject of an early morning webinar hosted by the FIA this week, because working in your pajamas doesn't mean you get to get out of working. Derek Salmon of the CME said at one point that the exchange put out notices and advisories about the possibility of negative prices calculated under the Bachelier model, rather than sounding the alarms by putting out a full press release. He said the CME was worried that a press release would lead to, quote, unintended consequences. Can't fault him for being too careful. Also, JLN hosted our own webinar on the Bachelier model, which we'll discuss a little more next week. Speaking of being careful, the CFTC issued a statement this week cautioning traders about the possible return of negative oil prices. They also advised exchanges to be vigilant in exercising emergency authority, lest the markets become too disorderly. Nice market you got there. Be shame if things got too rowdy and somebody uh, suspended trading. Big announcement from Miami International Holdings this week, confirming that Myax Pearl Equities, the first equities exchange in the Myax family, will launch on September 25th, 2020, pending SEC approval. Testing dates will come out, quote, soon, depending on regulatory and quarantine-related conditions. It's like when you're on a long drive with little kids, and they're like, are we there yet? And you're like, no. And they're like, when are we going to get there? And you're like, soon. To reassure them and give yourself some peace. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope we'll begin to return to some semblance of normalcy soon. Until then, stay safe and happy trading. Mm-hmm.